Prime Minister pledges to remove Mithotamulla dump. Protests continue against garbage dumping in Karadiana. India's PM to visit Sri Lanka for international Vesak celebration. In international headlines, British Parliament backs May's call for UK snap election. Good evening, this is your News at 9. I'm Indivri Amwatha. We take a look at your top stories making news tonight. President Maitri Palasirisena today directed officials to expedite the provision of new houses to 98 victims of the Mithotamulla garbage dump collapse. The president made the directive at a meeting held at the Ministry of Disaster Management with the participation of Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe and several other ministers as well as security forces personnel. The death toll of the Mithotamulla garbage dump collapse stands 32 with 8 more people declared missing. President advised the officials to evacuate those who are living in the high-risk zones and expedite the process by providing infrastructure facilities. Two immediate measures should be taken. We should evacuate the people from the high-risk zones. Also, we should make sure that the people who are housed in camps get their daily welfare facilities. The removal of the garbage dump should be immediately done. There is no problem from the government side regarding the funds which are to be granted to the victims. According to the reports, people were informed to evacuate in writing on the 7th of April. They, however, didn't want to leave. They will have to leave from the location and the government will provide them suitable alternative land. The next progress review meeting on the Mithotamula disaster situation will be held on the coming 21st at the Disaster Management Center. A section of the Mithotamula garbage dump collapsed last Friday, killing over 30 people. You are now witnessing the rescue missions carried out by the SCF, Tri-Forces and the police. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe, who arrived from Vietnam this morning, visited the Mithotamulla area. Prime Minister said that the garbage dump in Mithotamulla will be removed. The Prime Minister arrived at the information centre established at the Rahula Vidyale, Kolonnava. Later, the Premier met the victims of the tragedy. <laughs> The Prime Minister also inspected the affected area. We have decided to provide housing to everyone who has been affected by this and the UDA has provided the houses. They will be able to move into the new houses between May and July and until then special assistance and alternative programs will be in effect. We hope to receive the full assessments by the end of this Friday. All organizations must work together to achieve this. We took various steps. Some came too late and lives were lost. We must accept the responsibility. In the meantime, few members of the national cricket team, including skipper Rangan Herat, visited the welfare camp at the Terence and Silva College, Kolonnava. They donated television sets to the victims. Meanwhile, the NBRO says the process of demarcating the high-risk zones surrounding the Mithotamulla garbage dump concluded last evening. The Colombo District Secretary Sunil Kannangara said the assessment of property damage in the Mithotamulla tragedy was completed today. Health officials urge locals of Mithotamulla to be aware of health issues arising from the garbage dump collapse. Chairman of the Public Health Inspectors Union, Upul Rohana, warns of a spread of skin disease as well as diarrhea, dengue and leptospirosis. He added that the public should steer clear from the affected areas. He also noted that traders should refrain from selling any herbs and vegetable produced in affected areas as they are unsuitable for public consumption.
And we will bring you more news of the Mitodamula garbage dump collapse uh, and the developments. Uh, and we move on to the United Nations International Day of Vesak celebrations, uh, celebrations, which will be held in Sri Lanka for the first time this year. With the participation of uh, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and President of Nepal, Vidya Devi Bandari, Sri Lanka will host the celebrations this year. Minister of Buddha Shasana, Dr. Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa revealed the arrangements ahead at a media briefing in Colombo today. The UN General Assembly in 1999 internationally recognized the Vesak Full Moon Poya Day to acknowledge the contribution which Buddhism, one of the oldest religions in the world, has made for over two and a half millennia. Since then, the UN International Day of Vesak is celebrated annually. This year, the International Vesak celebrations will be held in Colombo and Kandy on the 12th, 13th and the 14th of May. Minister of Buddha Sasana Dr. Vijayadasa Rajapaksha elaborated on the Vesak Day preparations during the media briefing. On the 12th, the main opening ceremony will be held in Bandar Naik International Memorial Hall. The 12th evening, there will be a Vesak zone in Diyavanna. The second day evening, there will be a cultural show in Nelumpokuna. The third day, the delegation will leave to Kandy and there will be a special exposition of the sacred truth relic in the afternoon of the 14th. That is a limited one for the delegates. After that, the closing ceremony will be held in the Mahamalur of Sri Dalada Malikavar. There will be a national Isak Day celebration which will be held in Bhattarama Rajamahavihare on 9th. Also related to the Mithatamulla dump uh, collapse. People in several areas continue protesting today against the decision by the Colombo Municipal Council to dump garbage in alternative areas. Residents of Karadiana engaged in a protest against garbage dumping by the CMC in their locality. It was worked off adjacent to the Borupana Bridge. The protest halted the dumping process for some hours. Several garbage trucks which reached the dump during the protest were diverted. Once the protesters had dispersed, garbage brought from Colombo, Kasbava, Moratua and Borlaskamo were dumped at the Karadiana dump. This will not end here. Although the court has permitted 350 tons of garbage to be dumped, they will request another order increasing the stipulated amount. In such an event, we too will have to go to court. The authorities are staging a show. Though the trucks were sent back, those will be brought back once we leave the site. Although we leave now, we will return tomorrow and guard the place the whole day. The only solution to this issue is to seek a different location to dump garbage. The manager of Karadiana Garbage Dump, Danuka Vijayaratna, told Adha that 348 metric tons of garbage was brought to the dump by the CMC using 70 trucks. In the meantime, police provided security at the garbage dump. Yesterday, the Kasbava Magistrate Court granted temporary permission to dump up to 350 metric tons of garbage per day at the Karadiana Dump until the 28th of April. People of Dadagamua, Veyangoda also staged a protest against garbage dumping in the area. The protest at the Kalagedihena junction led to traffic congestion. Locals were agitated as they had been informed that garbage from Atanagalla, Gampaha and the Katunayake airport is being dumped in the area. The officer in charge of the Veyangoda police and the assistant superintendent of the Nittambua police arrived at the scene as locals blocked traffic for nearly an hour. Later, acting secretary of the Atanagalla Pradesh Sabha arrived at the scene and promised in writing to remove the dump within three months. The Chief Minister of the Western Province, Isura Deva Priya, says that Presidents near the Mithatamulla garbage dump were informed of the fact that the area was a high-risk zone prior to the disaster. The Chief Minister made these remarks at a media briefing in Colombo today. 
Only the segregated garbage will be taken into UDA lands from now on. This action will be strictly enforced. Recently, Mr. Kindelpitiya and former chairman of the Kolonawa Municipal Council spoke to me over the phone. They said that engineers have identified that there could be a garbage dump slide in the area so that those residents must be evacuated from the location. However, they pointed out if we are to evacuate residents, we'd have to provide them with a monthly allowance of 15,000 rupees. I clearly instructed the municipal commissioner to give however much the people need and evacuate them immediately. They were informed of the high-risk zone beforehand, but then they wouldn't leave their native lands. Everybody who knew about garbage advised me against going to the location. They said you would be able to solve issues related to any garbage dump, but not the one at Mithotamulla. Welcome back to the news. The government plans to introduce laws to prevent the sale of cigarette within a 500 meter radius from schools. Minister of Health, Nutrition and Indigenous Medicine Dr. Rajatha Sena Ratna made the revelation, adding that the decision is health oriented and not profit based. He noted that revenue generated through the sale of tobacco amounts to 100 billion rupees and 72 billion rupees and is allocated by the government to treat smoking-related diseases. We'd like to bring you today's stock market performance. The benchmark all share price index gained 64.43 points to close at 6446.8 while the S&P Sri Lanka 20 index gained 48.78 points to close at 3671.56 The turnover was 5.1 billion rupees with 73.7 million shares change in hands in 6434 trades Today's foreign purchases were 4.6 billion rupees and foreign sales were 4.7 billion rupees. Here's a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other major currencies during today's trade. And the chief executive officer of Deutsche Post DHL Group, Dr. Frank Appel, says DHL is committed to enhancing its investments in Sri Lanka. Speaking to other Derana today, Appel highlighted DHL's investment plan as well as the barriers they face in the logistics and services industry in the country. Dr. Frank Appel, during his two-day visit to Sri Lanka, said that DHL's operations in Sri Lanka currently amount to 50 to 60 million US dollars, but the focus of their investment is in talent. Our contribution to the companies are usually jobs. So we probably will create in the future that our business continue to grow even more jobs for locals. And our whole senior team here is local because we have a clear policy in our company. We want to be the most global company with local flavor. Sri Lanka has a very good talent group due to the literacy of the people, the, uh, the English uh, language skills which are important. We believe it be instead of CapEx investment, will be more investment in vehicles and office space, warehousing, and that will continue in the same pace on a single digit million are in, in, in the next couple of years. The DHL chief, however, pointed out that barriers still do exist for service and logistics industry stakeholders. There are three common things which are important to develop a country. It's good infrastructure, second is good education, and third is open markets, good connectivity, seamless border processes. Better the connectivity in the countries is that more costs can be taken out because you have less traffic jam and delays. I know on the global level there is a lot of talks about protectionism. You know, the advice I give everybody who want to know that is Protection it doesn't have anybody, neither the country who protects themselves nor anybody else. So if your government takes a form, opens the market more by having easy access for import and export, then the country will be uh, in the future. Sri Lanka has an extraordinary and diverse pool of cultural heritage and ancient monuments in the form of buildings and other archaeological sites. 
Little do we realize even the smallest gesture on our part could have a profound effect on their conservation. Other than have found a story where the need for action is far greater than ever if we are to protect our heritage. Built by the British in 1921, the Demodera Nine Arch Railway Bridge is ensconced between Ella and Demodera Railway Stations. It is also one of the country's popular tourist attractions, with many tourists visiting this quaint and interesting railway bridge every day. The other Derna correspondent, however, highlighted the difficulties faced by people who visit the attraction. Local and foreign tourists visit this place every day. They, however, lack sanitary facilities and water. We have made a request from the Pradesh Sabha for two toilets, which has not materialized. In addition, wasp hives formed under the arches also disturb the tourists who come to enjoy the beauty of this historic structure. We also notice visitors defacing the arch with graffiti and discarding waste at the location. Locals claim the site is left unsupervised by the authorities. It is high time for the authorities to take measures to preserve such sites of historical value. Welcome back in your top sports story. Spin bowling legend Mataya Muralitharan has become the first Sri Lankan to be voted into the ICC Hall of Fame. He will be formally inducted during the ICC Champions Trophy this June. Sri Lanka cricket made the announcement in a press release today stating his illustrious career demonstrates that he belongs to his highly prestigious group. Mutaya Mulitharan has been a legendary part of Sri Lanka's ODI successes from 1993 to 2011. He was a catalyst in the 1996 World Cup winning squad. Mulitharan, whose last international fixture was the World Cup final in 2011, finished his career with 800 wickets in tests, 534 in ODIs and 13 wickets in 12 T20 internationals. And in football, Real Madrid advanced to the semi-finals of the Champions League yesterday in a game fraught with controversy, overcoming Bayern Munich in extra time, while Cristiano Ronaldo scored a hat-trick to take his Champions League tally to 100 goals. The game was scored by Arturo Vidal's contentious dismissal. Robert Lewandowski opened the scoring for Bayern Munich from the penalty spot and Ronaldo equalised for Real Madrid. Sergio Ramos' own goal tied the teams on an aggregate score of 3-3. Arturo Vidal was then controversially dismissed, tipping the game in favour of Real. In extra time, Ronaldo made it 2-2 on the night from a clearly offside position before completing his hat-trick. The Portuguese captain notched up his 100th Champions League goal in the process, becoming the first ever player to do so. Four goals in this quarter-final tie for... Marco Asensio added a fourth, leading Real to a 4-2 extra time win. In the meantime, their neighbours Atletico Madrid also edged past Leicester City into the Champions League semi-finals. Real Madrid are just about there! In tennis, Novak Djokovic won the last three games to defeat Gilles Simon of France in the second round of the Monte Carlo Masters yesterday. Djokovic trumps Simon 6-3, 4-6, 7-5 after having experienced an indifferent 2017 so far following a loss of form and injury. World number 2 Djokovic took the first set 6-3 with Simon striking back in the second to win it 4-6. Djokovic showed his nerve in the decider, winning the match after 2 hours and 33 minutes of play. The Serb will face either Pablo Carreño Busta of Spain or Russia's Karen Kachanov in the third round. In your top story from your international news, members of the British Parliament have approved Prime Minister Theresa May's plan to hold a snap general election on the 8th of June. The vote was passed 522 to 13 after a heated debate in Parliament despite heavy criticism from opposition lawmakers. Votes in favour of the proposed election overwhelmingly passed the threshold of two-thirds required to approve the plan. Britain will hold the general election on the 8th of June, with Theresa May seeking to strengthen her hand in Brexit negotiations with the European Union. 
for a general election because we will work hard for every vote in every seat in Scotland. And Mr. Speaker. Contrary to recent media reports suggesting a U.S. Navy strike force was steaming towards the Korean peninsula, it has now been revealed that the group had been traveling in the opposite direction at the time. The U.S. military's Pacific Command yesterday clarified that the group was heading towards the Korean peninsula. At present, following the completion of a military exercise with Australia in the Indian Ocean. U.S. Pacific Command, which oversees military operations in the region, issued a statement on the 8th of this month saying the Carl Vinson aircraft carrier and an accompanying strike group would leave Singapore and head to the Western Pacific. On the 12th of this month, U.S. President Donald Trump also told media that a powerful armada was being deployed towards the Korean Peninsula. His comments prompted a bellicose response from North Korea. The conflicting reports were attributed to a miscommunication between the Pentagon and the White House. Calling sharks has been propo or rather proposed by the Australian federal government in a bid to prevent shark attacks following the fatality of a 17-year-old girl on Monday. The state of government of Western Australia, however, has disagreed, saying that it refers the use of personal repellent devices known as shark shields over calling. A 17-year-old was fatally attacked by a shark while surfing off the coast of Esperance in Western Australia this Monday. In the wake of the attack, Australia's Federal Environment Minister said he would consider new proposals, including culling sharks to save human lives. The Western Australian government, however, rejected the proposal, saying there was no evidence culling would lead to safer beaches. The state government noted it was focusing on promoting individual shark deterrents such as shark shields. Two men suspected of planning an imminent and violent terror attack ahead of the French presidential election were arrested in Marseille yesterday. Party officials said the three frontrunners, Emmanuel Macron, Marine Le Pen and François Fillon, were warned last week of security risks linked to the suspects. Two Frenchmen were detained in Marseille yesterday over plotting an attack to coincide with the French presidential election. The suspects had reportedly met while sharing a cell in prison and were known to police as having turned to radical Islam. A machine gun, two handguns and three kilograms of explosives were among the weapons found when police raided a flat linked to the suspects. On to your weather forecast for tomorrow now. Fairly strong winds of up to 40 kilometers per hour can be expected over the northern part of the island. Mainly fair weather will prevail over most provinces of Sri Lanka. Highest temperature can be expected at Trincomalee and Vaunia at a staggering 37 degrees Celsius, while the lowest temperature can be expected from Kandy and Noorelia districts at temperatures varying below 20 degrees Celsius. The temperature in Colombo can reach up to 32 degrees Celsius. Here's a look at your city by city forecast. And that's all tonight from the News Centre. Before we go, we'd like to leave you with the picturesque sandy beaches of our island. Have a pleasant evening. Good night.
news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Adhavarana 24-7.